In this video, we're going to create a parametric window family. So we're going to come up here on our recent menu and we're going to click on new. We're just going to start from one of the pre-loaded window templates that are provided here in Revit. So if I come down to the bottom of my list, you'll see there are actually three types. We have our window with trim, a curtain wall window, as well as a basic window family template. We're going to select that basic window family template. It's sufficient based on the design of the window that we're looking to create here. So let's just go ahead and get that open. And you'll see there's some annotation that's provided here in the template that helps us just to orient ourselves as we begin to construct this new window family that we're creating. And we're just going to dive right in here. So I'm going to quickly switch to an exterior elevation view. And then I want to come up here to our family types menu and I just want to flex the height to give us a height very similar to the end result that we're looking for here so we're just gonna I'm going to use a seven foot height and just flex that that gives me the opportunity to lay out my reference planes here in a in a view that actually closely resembles what we'll be looking for in the end so we're just going to lay out a couple reference planes right here that just kind of set the frame up. So you'll see right here I'm just laying in some reference planes to the interior side of what's already provided here in the template. And we're actually going to come back to 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 adjusting the exact dimensions that we need. So now that we have those four additional reference planes created here, let's just give ourselves a parameter that controls that frame width, which is what we're laying out here. So what I'm using is my align dimension and just bringing myself out a dimension string that I can come back and assign a parameter to. All right, so now we have our line dimension. Let's just select one of these. And up in our options bar, we're going to add a parameter. And I'm going to give this a name very quickly, frame width. And I'm going to come up to my family types menu. And I just want to change this to an inch and a half frame width. And we'll just click apply. And then we're going to select these other line dimensions that we've already created. I'm just holding down control to multiple select those. And I'm going to change the other constraints that we provided to a frame width parameter as well. And you'll see they quickly offset themselves that exact one and a half inches from the existing reference planes that were given in this window template. All right, so let's just go ahead and get started with the extrusion process. So coming back up to create, we're going to come into ex our extrusion tool. Now I want to come back up here to create and we're just going to sketch out the reference planes that we'll need in order to lay out the moyens that are going to occur within this this extrusion. So down the reference plane, let's just go ahead and create the the vertical reference planes that we need here. and we're going to create the horizontal we're going to create five here and because we're going to constrain these reference lines I'm just quickly laying them in and then in order to get the equal spacing we're back up to our line And I'm just going to constrain the three of these to be equal distance. So you see I'm dragging my dimension string out and hitting my equals toggle here. And then let's just repeat that here in the horizontal direction as well.
This assures us that our moyens, as we flex the model, are going to continue to be constrained and have equal distance to give us three equal bays in the vertical direction as well as the five equal in the horizontal. All right, so let's go ahead and sketch the line work here. As we're already in our extrusion tool, we'll just begin to lay out this line work. Now I'm actually going to pick some lines for a few of these and I'm going to give myself an offset. I'm just going to go ahead and offset myself a half of inch. On this edge, offset myself a half of inch on this edge. All right. Now I'm just going to use my line tool. And we could actually pick the lines here as well. We'll just change that to a zero offset and we can actually lock our sketch in place. But you'll see it's not really necessary here. So what I'm going to do is just leave that alone. And right here we have the line work that I need. So what I'm going to do is just begin to trim this mod of this line work in place. All right, now I'm just going to break it in a couple areas so that I can continue to modify the line work that we need. down here I can just even come from just give myself some sketch line work in place and you see I'm aligned with the line work above as it's highlighting as well So there we are. Let's go ahead and trim this this line work as well. There we go. So I'm just setting up my line work that we're just going to copy to the other bays. All right. I'm going to get rid of this extra line that I have here. So now let's do this. Let's just go ahead and select my line work here. And remember, I'm just holding down my control key to be able to select additional. Now we're coming up to copy. I'm going to constrain it as well as do a multiple copy. All right. Then I'm just going to come out here and I'm going to come down to my next reference plane and make a copy.
So you'll see now we actually have the entire sketch work in place here. All right. And because this one resembled the exterior, we're just going to go ahead and stretch these down. The top and bottom are a little bit larger, but that's okay. We would modify that sketch work if we were looking to create an exact window replica. But we're just going to, now we're able to go ahead and click OK here. This sets up each one of the mullions. And now we do need, we do need one more piece of line work. And we're going to lock this line work around the perimeter in place to our reference planes. And we'll just go ahead and click OK here. Let's have a look at this in our 3D view. And we'll see our extrusion right now is currently one foot. So we'll go ahead and modify that. And let's go ahead and make this frame two and a half inches so that it sits in that window properly and then let's just go ahead and give it a flex and see how we're gonna change this let's bring this back down to even four feet for example and I'll just click apply so that we can see this you'll see we're remaining the equal spacing let's flex this width out to about six feet and you'll see that that takes as well. So I'm just going to go back to the original. Let's go back to six feet now and let's keep our three feet width. All right. So let's go back to, to our elevation view one more time. Now that we have that in place, the next thing we actually want to do is go ahead and create our glass, which is an extrusion inside of this frame that we've created here. So we're going to come back up to create and extrusion in the depth. I'm going to change that to half of an inch to represent my glass here. And we're just going to begin to lay these in. So I'm going to use my rectangular tool and I'm going to come up here and begin to trace over the extrusion line work that we have. And we do want to lock each one of these in place. So what I'm doing is I'm, we're essentially creating an extrusion within an extrusion here. And this extrusion is going to be entirely locked to the frame extrusion. So as the frame extrusion flexes, so will the glass extrusion within it. That's why it's important for us to lock this in place. and we'll just click OK for that. And now you'll see we have our half inch glass in place. So we're just gonna take a look at our floor plan view. Now you can see the glass is set forward. If we wanted to modify this, we could begin to modify where this glass exactly occurs within the frame extrusion. But you'll see this is how we begin to set up the window family. So 
you'll see that there's an extrusion for the frame in place. Then we've come back and we've created an extrusion for the glass in place. And we can begin to assign materials to these, which we will here. But we're going to do that in the next video. So I hope this video is helpful for you.